For me, it really posed the question of what happens when we change from television as the primary mode of communication to on-demand programming and the internet. And so, since that time, we've moved from what I'll show you is sort of the more rosy picture of the effect of the internet on democracy to a more apocalyptic uh, view of it. And there are three big questions, I think, that um, are posed by uh, the change in communication technology uh, for democracy. The first is, um, to what extent does uh, the marketplace of ideas, which has been a kind of cornerstone of our theory of the First Amendment and free speech, uh, to what extent has the theory of the marketplace of ideas as the best test for truth uh, really failed in the internet age? It's not clear that the marketplace of ideas was ever either so free or the best test for truth, but certainly in the internet age, I think we're finding that it's not, that it's not that more voices is lastly leading to a greater test for truth. The second is, does democracy require some basic agreement on facts among the population uh, and some minimal trust in institutions, right? Which is not to say that the internet is responsible for all of that, right? But it exacerbates both mistrust and this lack of agreement on facts. And the final uh, point is, does a democracy require some way of defining the political conversation and community, so, which limits it to people in the country who are human, okay, as opposed to um, foreign intervention into a, an election, foreign speakers, as well as bots, okay? I'll talk a little bit about bots with no offense to Otto here. Um, <laughs> so, as I said, there was a rosy picture of the effect of the internet on democracy up until certainly the 2016 election. Uh, there was the sort of repeated uh, 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 sort of fawning of praise, particularly on the Obama campaign's digital campaign geniuses who were able to uh, crack the code uh, of the internet to both raise money and to campaign. There was um, this rise in small donor fundraising so that the internet enabled people like Howard Dean and uh, even like Bernie Sanders to raise all kinds of uh, small donor uh, money as well. Um, there was this evolution in micro-targeting that again was sort of an element of um, uh, sort of the tailor-made messaging and mobilization campaigns of Obama and, uh, uh, and others. And the idea that with the end of television ads, we might move to a more sort of small-D democracy kind of environment in which different types of candidates could run that didn't have to have big war chests because they could uh, enable the, you know, YouTube or Twitter or the like could uh, facilitate different types of candidacies that didn't have that kind of money. Um, now, what's happened since the 2016 election is almost, you know, uniform apocalyptic forecasts about, uh, about what the, the uh, uh, internet is doing to democracy. And well, what are those sort of realms? Well, it's the you know, idea, of course, that the internet is promoting fake news. Or it's this rise in Twitter bots and the like that allow, as I was saying before, com communication from machines impersonating individuals. Or, of course, our friend Vladimir uh, who is, uh, you know, representative of uh, the foreign hacking of the U.S. election. And then as well, dark posts on the internet, that the idea that you don't even know when you're being advertised to, uh, and, and so the identity of people is being, and institutions and foreign governments, is being cloaked in the anonymity of the internet, right? So we move from sort of the liberation theology of the internet to this apocalyptic uh, forecast. Mm -hmm.